So one thing about the 5060 Ti that I found it undervolted extremely well. In this video, I'll talk about the results I was able to get. And if you got one of these, yeah, might as well give it a try. Get your money's worth. Welcome to Machines More. So a quick survey on launch day indicated that unfortunately the street prices for the 5060 Ti did push up a bit beyond MSRP. The Prime OCI reviewed seemed like it was 530 US. And as mentioned in the review, that does make it a little bit more difficult to justify. It does become more underwhelming at that price. But at the same time, it's not a bad GPU. It just depends on what you're willing to pay for it. And in fact, there may be a lot of hidden performance uh, with yours. So I'm gonna talk about undervolting, which is running the GPU at a lower voltage than it typically uses at stock. And at those points, you can decide whether to push up the GPU clocks or try to just get power performance, but at a lower power draw level. Uh, I'll also touch on overclocking the VRAM. Hopefully you got the 16 gig one. Card I have here is ASUS's Prime OC 5060Ti 16 gig model. And I popped this in my 7800X 3D system. I found the card to overclock very well. Uh, as always with this type of content, I do like to footnote that with overclocking or undervolting, there is no guarantee that yours can do the same. So this is more to show you how I got the results that I did as well as to give you a general framework how you might explore and tune your card. I've got Heaven 4.0 running in the background. I've got GPU-Z pulled up. Uh, this is really to look at the voltage. What we're observing is the common boost frequency that this is going to, 2750 megahertz. Also shows you here that uh, we're, uh, we're not gonna touch the memory clocks just yet, but the voltage, we're showing 1020 millivolts, and that's what our baseline here. And we can play with this core clock slider that's going to bring up the boost frequency so we can kind of gauge how well this card can boost its core clocks beyond the stock boost. We're not going to touch the power limit slider yet. This is just bone stock power. Uh, I covered this in my launch review. I was able to get the card up to plus 350 without touching the power slider. Now I did run with about th three watts more power than the stock, which is a negligible amount, but without doing too much, it does actually overclock pretty well out of the box this way. So at this point, this gives uh, us a kind of baseline to work our undervolt, and I'll show you a quick and easy way with added performance first. Uh, so the quick and easy way to do this, if you found that the card is running fine at whatever core clock boost they've done, maybe plus 300, plus 200, you know, whatever, just go ahead and drop the power limit. Uh, stock is running at 1020 millivolts. We've shifted up the curve 350. We can just drop the power limit to get the card to run at a point on the curve with lower voltage. You just want the same or slightly better performance. In this scenario, you also won't use as much power. So we go ahead and put the power limit in. That drops the to where the card runs uh, a lower point on the voltage frequency curve. And that's gonna set in a little bit lower here. Right now it's hovering between 965 and 1000 millivolts and uh, 2970 megahertz on the boost clocks. It's, uh, well, 2970 is hovering around 3000 megahertz. So that gives you a basic idea. We've dropped power by a little bit actually, because it'll be closer to 22 watts that we drop when we get to superposition, which is more consistent than heaven. This will get you more forms at a lower power usage. So that is an undervolt down to whatever this number you end up with here. So that's not bad for, you know, just a couple of sliders work. And by the way, we're still looking in the background. We're just looking at this to make sure that it's still running fine without any artifacts. Obviously, if it crashes, then no good, right? So we we want to kind of, uh, you know, if that's unstable, we have to dial down the magnitude of the core clock boost, and that'll make it run at a higher uh, voltage. So uh, we'll just reset it now. I'll show you a different way. We'll adjust the voltage frequency curve. This is a more in-depth way to do it. Now this 5060 Ti, I'm not sure about the other words, but this one does seem to be kind of finicky. Um, in the sense that usually when I play with this voltage frequency curve, it reflects pretty well at the GPU side. Just an example, I'll show you real quick here. What I would normally do is just lower this curve a little bit, pick a point here, say, you know, 925 millivolts, and then bring that back up to the common boost frequency. And then say, bring, you know, this point here, um, which is a, a thousand. Uh, millivolts up to that common frequency and that's denoted by this uh, with this dash line here and you just click OK and then I would expect to see the card come in a lower point on the uh, voltage frequency curve but 
you know, this is still showing 1020, and then you're kind of asking the question, why are you going here when you could get the same frequency and go there, right? So it's clearly doing something funny. Normally, it would go down to 925, and you can see that's actually not happening here. So you got to be a little bit more aggressive with how you tune this. We'll just reset it here. And we'll go ahead and drag this down to, say, minus 400. It's a little bit more magnitude than what we were able to push clocks to at the beginning. And then I'm going to take this point, say, 870 uh, millivolts, and I'll bring this up to 2750 megahertz. And I'm going to take this 1000 millivolt point, bring it up to 2750, 2750, maybe a little bit higher. It doesn't really matter too much. We're, get, we're just getting this flat line here. So go ahead and click the check mark, and uh, you see the voltage is coming down, right? So 9, 980, it's kind of a, a familiar point to where we were previously. So I, we can actually do a little bit more, right? Because if you're seeing this, you knew this, we, we could run at 2950 or 3000 megahertz at this voltage. At 980 millivolts, we can get better performance, but we want to drop power even more. So knowing that we can definitely run this way, we can just bring these lower points higher to closer to our common boost frequency so that we can, uh, you can this one here, right? 850, I would just drag these up, these lower points and kind of work our way up iteratively. So this is what my curve looked like when I was done with it. And you'll notice that we're at about 880 millivolts and we're running close to the 2715, we're running at 2715, so close to the common boost frequency, just a little bit lower, a slightly lower. Um, we'll get a slight bit of a performance drop, but if you look right now, the power is considerably lower than what we started at, right? Out of the box, it was a lot higher. And so 111 or so, if we just undo all these changes, you'll see this goes back to, here it's about 160 so watts, right? So, not a trivial difference there, All right? So enabling that undervolt again. I saved it under profile one, right? And so enabling that undervolt again, about 113, it's, it's gonna fluctuate a little bit, but I saw about a 45 watt, uh, maybe slightly more, a 45 watt drop or so. And we're getting similar performance. And I'll show you that in the benchmarks here. So this is a more granular way to do it. Um, if you did it the quick way, you're actually still at a similar spot in terms of pushing your silicon. Uh, you're setting a different curve at a higher voltage point where you're getting higher clocks. So this is different. This is more if you want to chase the lower power consumption and you're fine with the performance uh, compared to what it was at stock. So this way, saving about, like I said, 45 watts, uh, it's quite a good amount. And you do want to make sure as well in the background that uh, the uh, screen doesn't have any artifacts, any issues, any funny lines, then you know you, you want to uh, dial things back up. Independent of this, you can also push the memory. Let's talk about that. So this slider here is, uh, it only goes up to plus 2000. And so I can, I think you can do it slowly if you want, but I will venture to guess here though, that most cards should be able to do plus 2000 pretty well without any issue. Uh, with this GDDR7, I think um, there's, yeah, you, you can just, <laughs> let's go ahead and set it 2000 and see what happens, right? Game with it, stability test it if you want, but um, plus 2000 should be easily achievable. So you get an idea of uh, how much change the, 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 our, our tweaks accomplished and we can run superposition here and figure out the before and after so it should be you know being this the undervolt case should be similar fairly similar what we want to see is that it's close to the stock right and so uh, once you run this at stock and then once you run it with the tuning before or after just to get a baseline and then you can run this again if you're as you're tweaking it just to see where your improvements are so this is a convenient tool it just shows you that uh, you know how you're doing so I'll go ahead and show you a few performance levels here. So first off at the stock VF curve and memory clocks, superposition 4K optimized score was just a smidge over 12,000 with the undervolt to 880 millivolts. 
Uh, the clock's coming in at 2752 megahertz, a tiny bit below the 2812 megahertz stock frequency I got. Um, here the result was 11950, so it's practically the same performance except that the card was running at 125 watts versus the 172 or so watts that it was running at stock. Uh, with that, Undervolt plus the memory OC up to 2000 megahertz, uh, I got 12278. So with the Undervolt plus boosted clock that I got from just pushing up the slider, 350 megahertz, which yielded 3157 megahertz, and the power limit down to 83%. That was 12566, and this is running at 150 watts here. With that and the memory clocked at 2000 megahertz, I got 12921, which is actually a fairly impressive result for not having to do too much uh, there. Either way, you can run the card on lower power than out of the box. At that point, you can pick more performance at slightly less power or par performance at a lot less power. Once you figure things out, you can also pick and choose in between those uh, two areas. So I will say I did not have too much luck in a traditional overclocking scenario just by just giving more power to the card. I actually could not push the clocks beyond plus 400 megahertz. And at about 192 watts, I was able to get the clocks to 3190 megahertz, which is not much higher than you know what we saw there, which along with memory OC yielded 13592. So it didn't scale as well at that point, because personally, I'd rather be 40 watts lower with 95% of the performance. So uh, might as well get your money's worth yet. Yeah. So I <laughs> hope you found that helpful. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Big thanks for watching.